What's up YouTube? Thanks for joining us again today and this is going to be a really exciting video. So what we have for you today is strictly going to be on fuel plumbing. I'm going to show you how I mount the fuel cell in the trunk. I'm going to show you how I create my own parallel fuel lines at the intake manifold and I'm going to show you how I mount the fuel pressure regulator along with the pre-pump filter and the post-pump filter and of course also show you where I mount my external fuel pump. Okay so what you can see here is I've already started working on the mounts for the fuel cell. And essentially what I've done is similar to what we did on the radiator mount. We welded some nuts so that this could basically be captive with these bolts. And we're gonna make legs that come off each of these pieces here and here. So here are the legs all kind of welded up. We just tacked them. Getting a little bit better though, which is nice. So I'll put these on the bottom of the fuel cell and uh, check it out in the beetle. And here it is, marked, mocked up in the beetle. So you can see the legs here come down to there, into the f inside of the trunk. Still enough room to fit our radiator fans and we'll make some ducting to try to get the air to go around this so we don't heat it up. Um, but as far as the fuel cell, really all we need to do at this point is do the finish welds on the frame and then get this glued into the car. All right, so we're gonna change up the mount. So I'm gonna cut these down and reuse the original bracket. And here we have our new mounting position. And this is most likely what we'll go forward with. You can see we got the same mount design in here. And uh, that actually gives me the whole trunk back, which is nice. I will have to route some of the fuel lines through here, but I think it ends up being a lot better and it keeps away from the radiator. Now I'm just working on one of the mounts for the fuel filters. Uh, I cut this piece basically out of this larger piece. <clears throat> and what I'm gonna do here is, it already came with a bracket, so what I'm gonna do is bolt this together and essentially weld the tab to mount it to the car. So you can see I already installed the shutoff valve here because I think that's a good idea just for the sake of being able to close off the uh, fuel flow and I put it to the back side so you won't accidentally flip it. But so now I need to figure out where I'm going to mount a filter. So you see I have the filter here with my plate for the bracket on the back and I have an adapter here. What I'm hoping to do is well the little bracket right here to use with the filter. So it should be pretty easy actually. And so the goal is to, at least from my understanding, is to try to always keep this going in a down downward path, at least till I get to the fuel pump, which is here, but I'm actually gonna be mounting elsewhere. Um, so I'm trying to keep this at least somewhat sloping down. So what we'll do is we'll just measure this up real quick. And that is just about 5 eighths. So we'll cut a piece of 1 inch square tube to 5 eighths and just weld a little pedestal right there. So we'll be able to take this in and out if need be. 
So now we have our bracket with the little extra peg attached. We're gonna figure out exactly where it ends up over here, grind it down and weld this on. So now I'm going to switch to going to the motor side of the fuel system and what I'm going to actually do is remove the intake manifold. I never fully torqued it down because I had a feeling I was going to need to take it off again. So we'll pull the intake manifold, uh, run the rubber lines that I'm going to use underneath it for the parallel fuel feed and we'll also mount the fuel regulator to the intake manifold. So real quick we just got to take this off. So the first thing I'm actually going to do is get my fuel pressure regulator together. And you can see I have all my fittings on and I just put on the fuel mechanical fuel gauge. And I'm also going to attach an electronic fuel sensor so that I can hopefully data log in my meta, mega squirt. But what's really cool is I've been using this uh, Permatex seal and lock. So it's very much just like um, it's a thread locker and a thread sealant in one. So it's pretty interesting. I figured I'd give it a shot. Uh, it's made for fuel and oil, so it should be no issue. Alright, so now we'll get into cutting up some of the fuel line. Uh, got this uh, Gates EF5 5 fuel line, so it should work with everything we have. So a quick update, just because I'm kind of jumping around on this a little bit, but I'm trying to mount, make a bracket for the fuel pressure regulator. And so you see here, what I've done is I've used one of the holes that's already in the intake manifold. And essentially, I'm probably just going to weld the bracket that came with this on here. And there you go, that'll be my bracket for the fuel pressure regulator. So here you see I have the bracket that came with the fuel pump, sorry, the fuel pressure regulator. And I have my bracket that I made to mount to the actual intake manifold. So what I want to do real quick is weld these together. Boom. And then we will mock it up on the engine. So you can kind of see the final product now on the back side. We have these two fuel rails coming together, feeding into the fuel pressure regulator, and then that will go back to the tank. And on the inlet, I'm going to just leave a long hose for now, but it's going to run to this T under here, and then that will feed into the front of the two. So basically, fuel will go in, go through these two fuel rails, come out the back here, and back into the fuel pressure regulator. Um, so all we have left now is to mount the fuel pump, the second fuel filter, and then run the AN lines. And uh, there's only three AN lines to run, so this will be pretty easy. So I decided I'm going to mount my fuel pump right down here, and I'm going to use riv nuts to do it. So this should be pretty easy.
So the last thing I need to do before I can run my braided lines is to set up my fuel filter, the one that goes before the fuel rails. And if you look very closely, you can see I already started right down here. There's a bracket that I'm going to make so I can bolt in here. You can see I pinched it off just to kind of hold it in place. And I'll use that bracket to mount the fuel filter. And that'll be the last thing I need to do uh, before I can run the fuel lines. And just for reference, here's the fuel filter. This is a 10 micron. So this is really fine filter that you use before the fuel rail, um, just to make sure nothing gets into the fuel injectors. You see right here, we're gonna use the same trick that you've probably seen in a lot of my videos at this point, where we weld a nut onto an angle iron. And I'll show you this installed in the car. Now you see this bracket is mounted right here. Um, it's more or less inside the wheel, but it'll, that'll never touch. There'd be a lot of things, it would be, we'd have a lot more issues before that. So I apologize for not catching this, but essentially all I did was I took the L bracket I showed you guys with the welded nut on it, and I just extended it with a longer piece so that now I'll be able to fit my fit my fuel filter on this bracket and it'll still clear on the uh, body of the beetle. And so now I'm marking this bracket with the uh, the mount that came with the fuel filter. So I got the two holes marked out. And then I'm gonna actually weld the bolts in place. I'll be able to take this bracket on and off without having to actually tighten the bolts. And then I'll just apply the nuts on it once the fuel filter's in place. So now all we need to do is just kind of tack weld these on the back side, and we will be good to go. So you see now, this is on the inside of the car. You can see there's my new bracket. I already put the lower part of the fuel mount bracket on there. If I can get my camera to rest, I can actually now put this on. And we got a couple lock and let's lock it in place. That is Ratchet Motors' first ever braided fuel line. Braided anything line. And for this next stretch, I mean, now every fitting after that is going to be exactly the same. So we made the hose for the, I guess basically you'd say from the fuel tank to the fuel, oh, sorry, from the fuel filter to the fuel pump. And now we'll need to make one that's almost the whole length of the car from the fuel pump to the filter that goes before the fuel rails. So that's one more line we need to make. And then the third line we'll make is from the fuel pressure regulator back to the fuel cell. So that'll also be about the full length of the car. So I just ran the lines under the car. It's a little hard to film there just because I'm only having it on jack stands. So you understand how I'm mounting them to the bottom of the car. Essentially I'm using these P clamps that I bought on Amazon. I'll provide the link. And then just these kind of self-drilling screws. These are pretty screws. These are pretty standard. Um, people use these for a lot of things with mounting body kits, fender flares or whatever. Um, but yeah, just clamping the lines like this and mounting them to the bottom of the car. And then, for any places that may pass through metal, um, what I have for now, which may be a permanent solution, I actually got this at Harbor Freight. It's this plastic hose. Um, it's usually used for wiring, but I think I'm just gonna cut it for sections where it's gonna be close to uh, metal bodywork, and just use like electric tape or something to hold it in place, or maybe even zip ties to hold it in place. 
So you can see one of the spots that I use this protective hose is right here. Um, I don't have a grommet right now, so I basically just tape this on the top and the bottom. And if you look closely, you see it's that plastic hose that I was just referring to. All right, so that's everything we have for today. Thank you again for tuning in. Just a quick recap, what we ended up doing here was installing our fuel cell, running all the fuel lines from the fuel cell to the motor and back again, and making sure that we basically installed our our filter before the fuel pump and after the fuel pump so that we aren't getting any gunk anywhere in the, in the uh, fuel pump or in the fuel injectors. So with all that said, um, it's a little hard to get the fuel lines under the car just because of my setup. I don't have a lift among jack stands. So at the end of this, I will try to put in a couple beauty shots of what I've installed. But I just wanted to leave this video saying thank you to everyone. As of my most recent check, we're up to about 115 subscribers. That is huge. I can't overstate how much I appreciate all the support we've got this so far. And with that said, if you aren't subscribed now, go ahead and click that button in the corner. It really means a lot to us. It kind of helps us gauge where we're going, if we're doing the right things. As always, make sure to leave a comment in the bottom. Uh, and we look forward to seeing you again soon. Our next video is going to be installing the turbo installing the coolant lines, and then wiring, and then this car is going to be running. So there's a lot of excitement to come in the next few videos. Thanks again everyone for tuning in, and hope to see you again soon.